All right, today we have a Sony PVM 1341. It's got the squiggles and other geometry and visual issues. And we're gonna look at the steps taken to troubleshoot and correct the problems. So as you can see with this PVM 1341, we have a nice bright tube but these weird snaking vertical lines on high contrasting images like this grid pattern in 240p test suite. Now besides those wavy lines on high contrasting vertical lines, I, uh, I noticed like a ghosting or smearing effect on high contrasting text and also a vertical shrinkage of the overall picture. So my first step here is I'm going to swap out these boards because I have another 1341 with a dim tube. So it's a perfect candidate for parts display and I'm just going to swap some parts over into this. As you can see, this tube was replaced in 07. And I later find out it's a 600 TV line tube, which uh, is pretty neat because this 1341 was only designed to be a 450 TV line monitor so at some point someone swapped in a high resolution 600 tv line tube and after comparing boards it doesn't look like they had to make any modifications uh for this tube to be compatible so here we got the power board out uh we got the crt discharged and just trying to get it stripped down. I'm gonna try to just replace that main chassis board at first, because my theory is, you know, something in the deflection circuit is bad, a bad cap, and that swapping the boards would alleviate that. And then I could recap this board, but things don't always go as planned. Now, once you have all the connections unhooked, that chassis board is supposed to just slide right out of that framing there's slots and if you have issues sliding it out i found it helps to push forward on the crt tube while you pull back on that chassis board i think it relieves stress you know over all the years that that plastic gets warped and that will help alleviate the stress so here we got the boards out and first thing i'm going to do is check a couple of these caps and the deflection circuit um, I'm focusing on that C535 and I get open circuit low capacitance reading and I also checked my spare parts chassis board and I get the same reading now I should have took that as a clue but once again I questioned that meter because you know, I haven't had it that long and I don't have a lot of trust in it yet, but I'm gaining more and more trust in it because both boards tested bad on that cap. But me thinking it was too big of a coincidence, I go ahead and try swapping these boards out anyway. So here we're just going to disassemble this spare 1341 I have that has a bad bezel cracked in multiple spots. The back part of the case is all crushed and crumbled up. Uh, this one, the tube is really, really dim and needs replaced. So for now, this is just a parts monitor unless I happen to come upon some uh, new in box, new old stock tubes for cheap. If you got some, hit me up.
Here's that old worn out tube. I'm just gonna go ahead and break this whole unit down and put the spare parts in a box. If I happen upon a new tube one day, maybe she'll get put back together like Humpty Dumpty. Oh yeah. So here we got that spare parts chassis board and I'm just reversing the disassembly process. Here's a little look-see of her all back together. Everything connected. Ready to put the case on and test her out. Now the top of this bezel was cracked in a couple spots. One of those chunks actually broke out. For now, I just super glued it from the outside and let it seep in those cracks. It's ugly, but it will hold it together and give it some structure for now. Later on, I can go back, epoxy it from the inside and repaint it. Here you can see all those spare parts. And we got this back together and ready to test. Unfortunately, we have the same problem, but to a lesser extent. So at this point, I decided to swap in that spare power board just to see. Nope, same issue. So then I try swapping out the input boards. Same issue. So then I try even swapping out the neck boards. Same thing. Then I even go as far as putting in that spare yoke. Nope. At this point, I'm wondering if someone just put in that 600 TV line tube without doing any research and maybe it's not 100% compatible and that's where all my weird visual artifacts are coming from. But I got to keep pressing on and I take the original chassis board down to the solder lab bench and I plan to recap the full deflection circuit. If you look by the flyback transformer, you should see horizontal deflection and there's a clear white line on the board. If you follow that all the way down, you can pretty much map out your deflection circuit. A lot of these smaller caps in the bottom, 1UF, 10UF, you don't really need to replace. They don't tend to go bad, but since they look like they're in circuit with the pots, I'm gonna go ahead and replace those as well. So what I did is just recorded the value of all the caps in that deflection circuit and also the power supply board. I'm gonna recap that as well. And what I pull out is pretty nasty and alarming. Like this cap doesn't really look that bad or puffy, but once I pulled it, that leaked out electrolytic fluid, that's been there for years or a decade or more. I mean, it's rock hard like epoxy. I had to scrape it off the board and Upon testing these caps, I would say half of them or more were bad. And here's just some examples. I got all the caps in that deflection circuit pulled and I'm just randomly grabbing some. This one you can see it should be 0.16 ohm or ESR or lower. And we hook it up to this peak ESR meter. Uh, we got an error on that greater than 40 ohm. So that one's toast, been toast. We can grab another one, 250 volt, 47 microfarad. That should be 1.6 ohm or less. Hook it up to the meter here. Another, another one that's not even picking up on the meter. So it's shorted out inside or just completely failed. Here we'll test a smaller one. Point four five ohm is what it should read. Point four five or less for a healthy capacitor. Twenty five ohms. It's just way out of tolerance. So, I mean, as these caps age, they're getting hotter and hotter and leaking more and more, getting more and more out of spec. And really, if you got one of these old 40 series, 
I would definitely plan on replacing at least that whole deflection side of the board. And it's probably a good idea to think about replacing the power side of the board too. I mean, one after one, these things are just shot. And since doing this 1341, I'm currently doing a 1344Q and it's the same story as this one. 0.34 less is what this cap should read. So here we finally found a good one. But yeah, these 40 series PVMs, they're pushing 30 years old and these caps need serviced. So here we got all the new caps populated on the board, yet to be soldered in. Here I've chosen to suspend that chassis board with bungee straps from my camera boom arm. And we're going to solder them all in vertically. This is not fun to do in this position, but you can do it. And here's a look-see at the main chassis board with that whole deflection circuit recapped. I went with 105C temp rating on all these. And I went with Nishikans whenever I could. Now we got the power board and those huge power filter caps my uh, nozzle of my desoldering vacuum would not even cover those. Like it, it was really a struggle. I had to snip them down with the side shears and then just kind of heat it up with the desoldering tool and suck that solder out. Had to do it several times. I'd use lots of flux. And then those caps weren't direct drop in replacements. That 400 volt, that main large cap, it, it wasn't even close to the same leg spacing and that was the only one on mauser that was available with that rating so i had to bend those legs to fit this board and you just got to work with what you're you know what you can get your hands on what's available at mauser but they are the 105 c temp rated caps and they they work out fine it's just the leg spacing was off Here we are with the chassis fully recapped in the deflection circuit. And we're gonna take it and that recap power board and get them back in this PVM, get this PVM buttoned up and see what we got. Now it's always a good idea and I suggest doing this anytime you do some work, but leave a service sticker so that the next guy who own, ends up owning this knows what's been done. Put one on the frame too on the inside just in case the outer casing gets the sticker removed or the casing gets swapped out or hell just for yourself to keep track. You know, if you got multiple PVMs or pro monitors. You know, in a year or two goes by, shit, you're going to forget what's been done to what. This helps you keep track and stay on top of it. So here we are, all back together, 
stick around the back ready for testing but i went ahead and pulled that that spare chassis board and right here you know first cap i stuck it on esr way over the limit way over spec here's another example error reading that one's toast too here's another one c535 toast so if you got a 40 series sony pvm plan on getting it recapped it's a ticking time bomb with the caps here we're testing it out fired up let the tube stabilize looking good no smearing definitely helps if you set your camera right and let's go ahead and get back in 240p test suite see what we got i can already tell it's it's looking way better at this point go ahead and load 240p now it's already looking fantastic compared to what it was but take notice at that little bit of color purity issue at the bottom left hand corner i'm going to cover that in the next video here's the grid pattern mother effing spectacular a little bit of bow adjustment i need to make and sizing and positioning but i mean it's it's great so this uh this pvm here and the work i did and the troubleshooting process just confirms to me like I mentioned multiple times at these 40 series, they need this service done. I mean, we're pushing 30 years and I think Sony skimped on the temp rating of these caps from the factory. They should have been 105 C temp rated and they were 85. So get them caps replaced. And this 600 TV line tube works perfectly in this PVM with no modifications and I'm gonna leave you with some footage. Here you can see it compared to the Ikigami on the bottom that Sony struggled in this comparison before and now it really stands out. Yeah, hopefully this video will help someone out or make them realize that their PVM needs recap soon and to avoid all these issues this one had or maybe your nuts like me and just enjoy watching informational videos about CRTs and PVMs whatever it may be thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe Oh, <laughs>